Kenneth Walker is a human joystick. After spending his first two collegiate seasons relatively off the radar as part of a running back committee at Wake Forest, he transferred to Michigan State this year, where he took on a workhorse role and set the college football landscape on fire. Drafted in the early second round by the Seattle Seahawks, there is at least an argument to be made that Walker might be the best pure runner in this class. But before you draft him to your fantasy team, you're gonna wanna know about the one glaring weakness that might completely crush his fantasy football upside. So let's get into the film. First, let's talk about his strengths. His 4.38 40 time was very fast for his size and he shows excellent burst on film, particularly when changing directions. When he sees an opening, he looks shot out of a cannon. He has good size for the position at 5'9 and 211 pounds. His size profiles similarly to guys like Mark Ingram and Kareem Hunt. He could stand to put on about 5 to 10 more pounds, but as a shorter guy, he's still pretty well built and should be able to stand up to a full workload running between the tackles at the next level. Elusiveness is all over his tape. It's definitely his best attribute. He's got great footwork and a lot of juice in his legs to change direction on a dime without having to slow down. If anything, he accelerates out of his cuts, which you love to see. Not every back, even in the NFL, has the technique or the explosiveness in his legs to perform a great dead leg cut but Walker specializes in it. What you want to see on film is a guy who can plant one foot, the stop foot, and then after loading up all his momentum in that leg, he can open up his hips and transfer all that energy into his go foot, exploding out of the cut as he changes directions. No pitter-pattering and taking multiple steps to decelerate, just boom. He's gone and the defender is left tackling the air. Walker could teach a master class on this. He frequently makes guys miss to create extra yardage beyond what's been blocked for him. He also shows good vision and patience, staying under control of his footwork even when there's early penetration in the backfield, and doing a good job picking his way through traffic to find daylight. He doesn't panic when he sees a body in front of him. He doesn't charge recklessly at the line and hope there's a hole. Every step with Walker seems to have a purpose, and that's a quality you love to see in a running back. He's also got good enough contact balance to get the job done. I see flashes of really good power and balance on film, but he's not a big bruising back, and I'm not sure I would go as far as calling this a strength for him. But I also I also don't see him going down easier than he should with arm tackles. His short and stocky build lets him be a little bit of a bowling ball, bouncing off would-be tacklers for extra yardage. And I don't see a bad habit of constantly bouncing to the outside even when it's not there. He isn't afraid to get in the trenches between the tackles and take on contact. Hey guys, I want to take a quick second to thank the sponsor of this rookie series, DynastyNerds.com. If you want to study these prospects for yourself and form your own opinions, you need to watch full games every snap so you can see all the strengths and weaknesses for every prospect and not just the highlights. The absolute best place to do that is the Dynasty Nerds film room. We cut up games so you can watch a full game for a prospect in under 10 minutes. We have hundreds of games in the film room and we have tons of hard to find college all 22 coaches tape. Get all that and more for the price of a cup of coffee every month. Go to DynastyNerds.com and use promo code COOP for 15% off. The most glaring hole in Walker's game is his lack of receiving production. He only had 19 catches for 136 yards in three years of college football. That's not a lot of tape to study, but I will say that when targeted, he looked comfortable catching the ball. He wasn't fighting his hands. He looked good in those drills at the combine, and there's already been a Seahawks practice video of him making a spectacular catch. But there's no evidence whatsoever that he can move outside and run routes as a receiver. Pretty much all his catches are checkdowns. He shows a willingness to pass block, but really inconsistent recognition and technique as a blocker. Now, y'all know I'm a film guy at heart, but we can't ignore the numbers. 13 of his 19 career catches came this year for Michigan State, but that was still only good for a 5% receiving share in that offense. Here's a look at running backs drafted in the top 100 but after the first round since 2011 who had less than 8% reception shares. For the most part, it's not pretty. None of these guys have gone on to become productive pass catchers in the NFL, and given how important that is in PPR leagues, it's not surprising that most of these guys have not been fantasy relevant assets in any regard. A few, like Carlos Hyde and Damian Harris, have been low upside RB2 options based on volume and goal line work. The one outlier who became a high-end fantasy asset is Derrick Henry, who also doesn't catch passes, but he gets absurd volume as a runner and is a physical freak of nature. As much as I like Kenneth Walker as a runner, 
he's not Derrick Henry. So even though he looks okay catching passes on film, and some will argue that his lack of usage was a poor scheme by Michigan State, I still think that it's something we simply can't overlook and just hope that because he caught a few dump offs in college and looked good doing it, that he will buck this concerning historical trend. Overall, Walker is still my RB2 in this class, although I think he's behind Brees by a pretty wide margin. He's an excellent runner, he got good draft capital, he landed in a good spot. Seattle loves to pound the rock, and Rashad Penny is both injury prone and on a one year deal. Chris Carson might as well be retired. They invested a second round pick in Walker, and I expect him to be involved early and often. If he does buck the trend and become a productive pass catcher, then the sky's the limit, but the risk that he doesn't is great enough for me to proceed with caution. I would still gladly take him in the first round of rookie drafts, but below Brees and my tier one wide receivers. For me, 1.5 to 1.7 is the range where I would begin to consider taking him. For more rookie breakdowns, check out this playlist right here, and I'll see you there.